It's on this fabulous Friday morning, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. William. Good morning, Rob, and it is fabulous. Beautiful day out there. The Sarge Michael Height in the house. Good morning, Robert. Good to be here. Good to have you, sir. And uh, I don't I want to call him a guest. I, he's the owner, he's the mogul, he's a delegate. He's the guy that signs my paychecks. The yeah. boss. He's got, got a lot of names. Payday today, too, <laughs> it's Rob. Payday today. Be nice. <laughs> he's, he's got a lot of names. Is that how I made the open? Because it's payday yeah. today. Best open of the year, by the way. Uh, we, I've been running it most of the week, I think. Yeah. Michael Hornby, good morning, sir. Uh, good morning. You know, Rob, uh, for the last 30 minutes, been sitting here patiently listening to these two guys on each side of me uh, pass intellectual wisdom between themselves. Well, I they're can, passing something between right, themselves. That's right, exactly. And I can reduce everything they said down to a short sentence. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't know what the sentence is. It's just that, <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing there. <laughs> Just a lot of air is what you're saying. <laughs> that's a lot of hot air. Well, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, Mike and Mike, you were both in Charleston this week for what was called a special session, and soon you'll leave again for an interim session. Talked to Craig yesterday. Mike talked to you earlier this week. Had Pat McGeehan on early this week as well. What did you accomplish? Um, not a whole lot. I mean, we went down there for a day. I, in my opinion, we, we wasted a lot of taxpayer money by going down a week early um all we did was by the way is recess so when we get down for these quote interims it's going to be another part of the special session could because we're still in session all we have done is recessed until sunday, sunday evening. six yeah so uh what what did we accomplish that we couldn't have accomplished a week later nothing mr hornby yeah i think uh it it gave us a full week to read through all these 27 uh, bills. I don't believe we should have been called in for that special one day because the governor knew, knew we were going to recess. Um, but it has given us some time to read through these bills. The Finance Committee did pass, I think, eight um, different bills through their committee. Uh, education passed one bill through their committee. Um, so we'll actually get to suspend rules on Sunday night, get those to – the floor for Monday, uh, and then I think finance is meeting, what, twice on Sunday, Mike? Uh, well, one, once on Sunday evening and once on Monday morning before session. Okay. So twice before session. Now, I did not mention Delegate Mike Pushkin's name in that list of people we spoke to this week. I'll bring <clears> up <throat> his name separately because Mike, during the course of the conversation we had with him earlier this week, Mike, of course, is a Democrat. He's the party's uh, chairman. Uh, in West Virginia as well. Uh, he had a lot of things to complain about, uh, not the least of which was a claim that he said, and I asked Craig about this yesterday, Republicans voted themselves a raise and then decided to raise insurance premiums on state workers. Your just, response to that? Just not true. It's not It's not accurate. The, the way that whole thing came down is the Commission on Legislative Pay made some suggestions because there hadn't been any raises to the statewide elected officials as well as the uh, delegates. And they had suggested... It hadn't been erased since when? I believe it was 10 it's, years. You no, know, it was almost 20. Okay. Uh, I think we. Had, I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 18 years that the legislature hadn't had a pay raise. So they made suggestions, and their suggestion was much higher than uh, what the House was comfortable with. And I believe what the House did, we didn't vote for pay raises for ourselves. We voted for pay raises for future legislators. Um, what we did is we said... We're going to put the pay at 75% of the median income in West Virginia. So if West Virginia does better, the pay will increase. If West Virginia does worse, the pay will decrease. Um, and that way we don't have to be put in that position to vote on that again. So we kind of put triggers in, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, the Eastern Panhandle delegation, we all voted for that. We thought it was the most responsible way to do it. It equated to about a thousand dollar raise. So. Mike, explain the seventy five percent to me. Other is that on for a daily uh, daily rate that you that you're paid or what? No, it, it's on a yearly rate. So um, we are essentially paid seventy five percent of the median income of West Virginia families. Okay. So w whatever that number is, seventy five percent is what the legislation the senators senators will get. And that's the same for both the delegates and the uh, and the we senators. Are, we are paid exactly yeah. the same. Yes. Yeah. 
So I thought it was important for our listeners to understand that mm -hmm. we didn't just give ourselves these or vote on ourselves to have these massive raises. What it's, was the recommended raise? Do you recall? It was over um, six thousand, I believe. Yeah, it, it. I think it was right around six thousand um, dollars was the recommended pay raise, and and the the legislative pay commission only meets i think every five years so it's not something we can really take up every year and make a decision on you can only take it up in the year in which they meet and make those recommendations so when when they make the recommendation what do they base it on anything specific is there a math calculation or do they just come up with a number randomly that they think makes sense you know, I, I really don't know how, I, I guess there's variables, but I think one of the things they looked at is, you know, uh, you know, 18 years ago when they did the last pay raise, they say, you know, what are the inflationary uh, points and how much has, uh, how much have things gone up since then and what would be an equal pay rate now compared to back then. And I think that's where they came up with the, the $6,000, roughly $6,000 number. The future number, you say it'll be 76% of, yeah. of the median income in West Virginia by whose calculation? Is that the federal median income, what the state's numbers indicate or what? Any idea? It's, it's based on when this commission comes back to look at it and recommend it. So they come back in, what, five years or whatever No, no, I think it's annually. I think they look at it annually. Um, and it, it's adjusted um, every year depending on what what that number is that 75 percent is and i don't know i don't remember whether it's a state um, number or a federal number this took off in the comment section yesterday with some passion too to the point where i'm not sure anybody in the comment section paid attention to the rest of the show after this thing got legs in the comment section one of the comments was you knew what the salary was when you ran for the position that's the salary Actually, I didn't. I, I, but <laughs> mining down a little bit on this. You, what, what, your, your thoughts on yeah, that comment, yeah, though? Sorry. You knew what the salary was when you took when you ran for the job. That's the salary. Well, I, you know, I, I don't disagree with that somewhat. But does that mean it never changes? I mean, because you can say that every single year, every two years, you can say the same exact thing, and then the pay never increases. At some point, somebody has to make the decision that the pay increases and, and keeps up with, with inflation. Now, I will agree with, with what some people are saying is it maybe we shouldn't be voting ourselves raises. And, and technically, we don't vote ourselves. We vote the, the, the future legislators because we, it doesn't take effect until after the next election. So we could essentially It doesn't be, take effect until January 1, 2025. We could essentially be voted out by then. Um, but it's that future uh, group that actually gets the pay raise. But some people say we shouldn't be voting for our own pay raise at all. And, and my argument to that is I don't know that I disagree with you, but I have to work within the constraints of the Constitution as it's written right now. And we, we are not allowed to vote on our own pay raise, mm -hmm. which is why it's, it's moved to the future. And that's why we put the, this uh, formula in is so that we don't have this issue ever again ever again yeah as far as pay you're paid only when you're in session is that correct um no, no. okay no. when are you paid what does they pay every day two mean? weeks you're paid every two weeks it, it, we get paid during more, during session during session during session okay but but and not once and then once a month a small stipend once a month for the rest of the year it's if, broken it's broken up basically it's twenty thousand, but it's broken up into uh more during session because you're down there and you have to go do your things, and then a small amount during the year, okay. usually about three hundred dollars a month. Okay, so the seventy-five percent uh, that's uh, uh, that's reflected in when you're in session, and then some small amount when you're not in session. That's based on a yearly salary. So the, the way they break it up, Bill, is they pay you okay. uh, a certain amount during session. Let's say two thousand every two weeks, um, and okay. then. When you're out of session, you get three hundred dollars a month. Okay, so and the seventy. Either way, it adds up to twenty thousand. So seventy-five percent is a full salary, regardless of whether you're in session. And that, and that equates to about twenty-one thousand dollars. Okay, so it's a one thousand dollar raise. Yeah, I think the median income in West Virginia right now is around twenty-eight thousand. Yeah, well, I did my Google search here. It says in two thousand twenty-two, the median income in West Virginia not household income but individual yeah. is 29,892 75 percent of that would be 22,419 that's 
what the math equals. That's the formula, and that would be uh, – so in, in 2025, though, you're not getting 22000 or w- w- whatever the latest numbers are. You're getting 21000 because it's and a $1,000 $1, raise. Is that a federal or is that state? According to the numbers from the state, it would be a $1,000 raise for next year. Yeah, so that's yeah. you, you will go from twenty to twenty one. And then, Correct. and then the next year when they get those figures, that gets adjusted to seventy five percent of whatever that new total is. If that new total is lower, then you get a pay cut. If it's higher, then you get a pay raise of some small amount. Yeah, correct. That's essentially what it is. Right. So uh, philosophically, I get the argument that legislators voting on their own pay raises is self serving, and in theory, you're voting on the next legislature's pay raise. But really, it's it's all you guys taking care of yourselves. Is the way it looks to the public. And this didn't come from a particular senator or delegate. This came from the pay commission. Correct. We had to look at it. And and trust me, we don't like doing it. The legislators, that's why there hasn't been a raise in over 18 years. Oh, it looks bad. Right. The optics are terrible. Mm -hmm. um, And and every time the next uh, time you have a campaign season, it gets held against you. You have people like pushing coming out and, and throwing that. The legislators hate this. They don't like it at all. That's why they did it. They wrote the law the way they did this time, where it's an automatic increase or decrease, and they don't. Have, it doesn't have to be a political football anymore. Do you have the option of declining a raise as a legislator? Can you say no? Set my salary back to twenty thousand dollars. Set it to ten. I, I want to work for so. free. I mean, is that even a possibility? I mean, you could donate your salary to whoever you wanted to if you had that. Mm-hmm. You know, if you wanted to. Yeah. But, but I think uh, you have to receive it, Mike. You have yeah, to I think receive you have it, to take and then it, and you, and yeah. then you can tra- uh, donate it. So, and, and we do get reimbursed for, for days we're down there, and we do get reimbursed for mileage. So, uh, you know, it, there are costs that go in, especially for the, those of us up here. It's a, it's a it's yeah. A there, long there's travel, not some dorm you guys live in for free down no. there. You have to pay your own rent. Yeah, yeah. we have to pay, we have to pay our expenses. You guys have the Delta House, right? We do. Which Mister of which Mister Height is the proprietor. Correct. He rents out. Ideal conditions, from what I understand. And the phenomenal amount. Of Personal chef, well, yeah. masseuse on site. <laughs> it's it's yeah, apparently top notch. None of that. Actually, our our um, our housemate is leaving us. Um, we'll have to find a new housemate. Cozy. Yeah, cozy. He was he was the cooker and the cleaner in the house. Um, yep. We're gonna have to set some rules. People got to pick up after themselves now. <laughs> Why are you looking right across the table right now? <laughs> well. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So the the salary for a legislator is I mean that it's small. It's it's frankly it's it's probably way too small. It's it's uh, $20,000 and there is a point where obviously you don't do this for money, but if you want to attract people to this position and you're going to ask someone who runs a business for instance to move to Charleston for 2 months and continue to run a business or their family or whatever uh, Twenty thousand dollars is not a lot of money. If, oh, there, a, there, after taxes, it's about twelve. There are several legislators that lose money by doing this. Sure, and I know people in the well, tough. You, know, you, you shouldn't run for the position. Well, and that's that's an yeah. attitude that you can take if you want to. But realistically, let you know. I mean, seriously, we're we're really going to be worried over a thousand dollar raise. You and, know? It's, and the same applies to county commissioners. Uh, I think they're way who get, who get a lot more, that. by the yeah, way, for not having more, to but, drive to Charleston. But and they also get more in actual salary. Uh, but they're respo- They but they're on call literally every day, and they meet every day, every week. So you know. So, so I think all these elected officials. I don't think any of them are, are overpaid. I would I would encourage anybody who thinks legislators make too much money or shouldn't get a raise to run for office, and then you can go in office and. You cannot get a raise. <laughs> you know, it's. I, I'm not going to begrudge somebody a thousand dollar raise. Yeah. I've driven to Charleston. Many people in our audience have, and I don't think it's a great town. You know, I I, I don't. It's it's, if it's on, declining on your list of places to visit. It, you know, it, it's there's, right. a, there's a couple things it, to do in I, Charleston the first time be. you've been I there. I think it's a beautiful city. It, I, every time I drive up to that Capitol building, I'm amazed. Yeah, the dome is beautiful. I'm is, not going to lie. Well, yeah. there are other plates in, places in the city that are beautiful as well, and and it it has the potential of being a great city. Sure, but it's not. I think it's in the it's in decline right now. Yeah, of course it is. You know, on the list of vacation destinations, no one's checking Charleston, West Virginia, on their list of where am I going to stay for a week this summer. I would disagree. Okay, well, introduce yeah. me to those. People. I mean, when they have the regatta <laughs> yeah. down there on the river yeah. and stuff, I mean, that's a big deal. It, it's it's beautiful in the summer. I, I, yeah, I mean, um, we I don't think it gets promoted enough, yeah. especially up here. 
All right, well, whatever. I, I'm not. I, nobody has ever said <laughs> to me I'm going to Charleston for some of the summer. neighborhoods up in the mountains are are really beautiful. There's some really good sites to go to. I, I I've enjoyed before I got elected. I never I never really went anywhere in West Virginia. Maybe Morgantown, yeah. uh, but I really have enjoyed visiting all the parts of our state. Um, I've just been amazed how different it is than. Mm-hmm. We're, but, we're totally different. Yeah, yeah, and we have we're sitting on treasures in pre- all these little towns, large towns, small towns. We have some beautiful buildings, uh, historical buildings. There's not enough money to maintain them, and and the governor, uh, our prior governor, tried to do uh, recognize this need, but there was not enough money to do the renovation. What's going to happen when we start losing these beautiful, beautiful buildings? Well, I think we passed a piece of legislation for for those blighted buildings and, and having developers getting a tax credit so that they can restore them. Uh, I, I've seen a lot of restoration in the New River Gorge area. Um, I, I think tourism is, is – fi- we're finally investing in tourism. So we realize, you know, what we have and what we can give. So I think there's avenues for people. Well, to to fix a more tear them down, there is a a dilapidated building fund within the state that that helps some of these communities tear these older buildings down that are in such disrepair and and just can't be used anymore. So there's some money there to help uh, some of these smaller communities do that and sort of try to revitalize them. Yeah, I look at it within Martinsburg. We have four or five buildings, historical buildings, beautiful buildings. The yeah. last thing you want to do is tear them down. But yet there's, in the case of the old courthouse, I think there's they'll probably repurpose that building and they'll have a good use for it. But some of the other buildings, they, they have trouble finding the most appropriate way to utilize them. Sure. Chuck Kirst, by the way, said the formula rounds it down to the nearest thousand. That's how you get to the $1,000. There you go. Right, whatever the nearest thousand uh, would be. So you go to interim Thank sessions you, this weekend. What do you do in interim interim sessions? What are you taking up there? Well, more normally, more we, of this tax cut. Normally, we're in committees and we're we're dealing with things uh, that that may come up in the next session. But because this is part of the special session, we'll be taking up the issues um, of the special session. Those those items mm-hmm. that are on the call, um, the regular meetings that we would do during interims, um, some of them will just go away. Now, if you're on finance, you'll be taking. A, if you're not on finance, you'll be doing your regular interim Correct. meetings. So, education will meet because we passed the the one bill for the uh, for the SBA already. So, um, so we'll have economic development, education, PEIA, all those other meetings will go go on, unless special session, you know, obviously mm-hmm. takes precedence. So, if- so the revenue numbers the first three months of the year are pretty much break even, which tells me that the tax rate is set about where it should be set right now. Am I reading that incorrectly? No, I, I wouldn't think so. That, um, you know, maybe the, the days of the surpluses are over, which is why um, many of us are concerned about an additional four or additional 5% tax cut. Um, if, if, if revenues are equal to expenses right now, um, in order to do an additional 5% tax cut, in my opinion, um, needs to be uh needs to come with e- an equal amount of uh cuts so if if you can't cut 100 million dollars 150 million dollars then you know there, there can't be a tax break mike let me pick up let me uh mine down that just a little bit everybody says tax cuts tax cut everything in the budget actually impacts affects a, a segment of our demographics from sure. your opinion is a hundred a hundred million dollars reasonable for for a cut uh, recovering from the agencies? Um, I would say in some agencies, yeah. If you were to go through the whole budget, you could probably trim fifty to a hundred million dollars. Would you want um, to give an example of which agency? Well, might I be think vulnerable? there's there's uh, still a lot of inefficiencies in in DHHR. Um, the three of them together, we're we're wasting millions of dollars on some of the hospitals, and and I think there's an effort right now to to uh, sell off some of those hospitals and get out of the long term care business and get out of the community hospital business, um, which I, I personally believe we have no business in. We what the heck's the state know about running hospitals? We need to get out of that kind of stuff and let let the private sector take over that and and run those those things. 
Fair build, enough. Are there others, other examples as well? Um, I, I think there are, are some some programs out there that um, that are not showing uh, the the metrics that you want to see. If you're if you're sinking tens of millions of dollars into something and you want to see the metrics back to say that it's actually improving the lives or making things better, um, then yes, you continue to do it. If not, it's time to cut the program, save those millions of dollars, or or go in another in another direction with them. Is there a mechanism in place with the legislators to to critically examine the matrices matrices of the various agencies on a regular basis? Not on a regular basis. You almost have to, uh, as a legislator or as a committee, ask for that information back on a year-to-year basis. And and one of the big issues that I, I see is with the substance abuse. Uh, the money we're we're throwing into substance abuse uh, in different areas, and then when you look at the metrics back, that we're just as bad as we were when we started, and you're like, you know, well, what what's all this money going to? Um, and a lot of things you see, especially over in Wood County, Wood County complains about this a lot, is you have these. Uh, these homes set up where you have people with addiction come in and and they treat them for two or three days and then they go back out and then they get hooked on again and then they come back and it's just a, this this well they've been shipped in continue, from, from all around the all, united states yeah, everywhere and just get dropped off there at one of these off on a bus. because they have a bed or something in wood county and then once they're there they stay there so you have this big population of addiction in wood county because that's where they decided to have a lot of those homes at so yeah. it's just not working what we're yeah. doing now and we're spending lots and lots of money in those areas is there a way to just make that available only to west virginia residents um, no, because I think there's Medicaid dollars tied to it. So if there's Medicaid dollars tied to it, you can't put those stipulations on it. And those are the conversations, like you said, yeah. Bill, we can't do all of this in a week, right? Uh, Which is uh, yeah. why I think a lot of us are sitting there going, we don't, we don't need to take up this extra 5%. Unless uh, our leadership and, and the Senate leadership can come up with a plan and go, hey, this is it, we're still waiting to hear. So I, I'm eager to see how that personal income tax bill goes through the finance uh, committee. Yeah. And, and there are many of us that also believe that there are still areas that need more money. So, yeah. you know, if you're going to make cuts to to address those, or yeah. well, I'll say shift the money, take the money from over here and shift it over here to where it's needed, then you certainly can't have uh, PIT cuts as well. well Rob's we, we, about we, to cut me off. Yeah, you're, you're getting cut off real quick. For DHHR, is there a time frame to do a formal evaluation of the success of, you, of the fact you've split it, split it up? Uh, no, we're taking each individual um, area now um, and, and evaluating them uh, on, a, on an annual basis.